Did this gun replace my custom Glock 19? Why, yes. Yes, it did. In this video, I'm going to tell you why. And now it's time for everyone's favorite portion of the video, what's in the box? This is the portion of the video where I show you what's in the box. First off, the box itself is a box. It is not a case or something you can carry the gun in. It is a cardboard box, which I'm fine with because I never use that case anyway. And it probably saves the cost of the total item having this in a cardboard box. Here's what comes in the box. You have the lock that no one ever uses an additional 17 round magazine, chamber flag, three additional back straps, a warranty card, and a warning card, an owner's manual that is 51 pages long. If you are brand new to guns in general or handguns and specifically the M&P line of pistols, this is going to be extremely helpful. The part that we care the most about though is going to be page 44 to 47, what mounting plates you need and what screws you need for what optics you have. If you purchase this, it's probably because you want to put a red dot on it and you don't want to have to mill your slide out. So go ahead and pause this and peruse at your leisure. Lastly, we have the main event, the gun itself in the classic blue see-through protective bag. There she is. Ooh la la. I have decided to switch from Glock to Smith & Wesson. And I'm gonna to try to explain as best I can why, in my personal opinion, I think that the gun that I have now is better than the gun that I had and is a much better value than the gun that I had. Let's first start off by saying I've owned Glocks and have pretty much exclusively carried Glocks for 10 plus years. I've just recently started looking into other handgun options out there. It kind of all started when I rented a bunch of different handguns with my dad as he was looking for something. After that, I kind of was just spoiled. I'm gonna go over what I've put into my Glock 19. We'll talk about all the different customization that I did to get it to where I kind of wanted it to be. And then I'll also talk about that versus what the M&P comes with standard. And you can make your decision what seems like a better value and what makes more sense to you. But for me personally, I think you kind of know where I'm leaning at this point. Well, here's my old Glock 19 in its former glory. As you can see, there's quite a bit of customization done to it, but the base is a Glock 19 Gen 4 in bazooka or World War II green. That's a factory Cerakote from Glock. I purchased it used, so it was a little bit less, but since it's still a custom color, it was $525. Then I have an Apex Trigger Kit in here. It's the Apex Glock Action Enhancement Kit. That was $150. I took it to Black Phoenix Customs for some slide work. Muzzle Mod, RMR Cut, Chamfered Edges, $190. JM Custom Grips did the minimalist package on it. Stippling, undercut, that sort of thing for $190. I put Ameriglow Suppressor Height Sights on it for $45. And that's pretty much it. If you're doing the math at home, it should come out to $1,100 to purchase the gun, get all the modifications done, all the custom work to get it to the way it looks in this picture. Now let's contrast that with the M&P 2.0 Optics Ready Full Size. Standard from the factory, we have front and rear cocking serrations, suppressor height sights, an optics cut with multiple adapters to accept multiple optics, Pretty easy and straightforward takedown lever and takedown operation. Enhanced ambidextrous slide release. An upgraded trigger. Very intuitive and easy to use magazine release. Excellent stippling. And two 17 round magazines. And I was able to get all of that, plus all the stuff that comes in the box, for 
$599 plus theft. All right, so we talked about kind of the features and the pricing of the two options, and you kind of have an idea at least of why I switched to this. But now I'm going to talk about a few things more in detail, like the optics cut, the sights, the trigger. I'll actually show you this trigger, and also kind of the X factor stuff, like the grip angle, the grip length, magazine capacity, and the aesthetics. Because <laughs> if it doesn't look cool, then, you know, what are we even doing here, right? First, I got to hand it to Smith & Wesson. Kudos to you guys for including suppressor height sights on something with an optics cut. I can't tell you how many other manufacturers have an optics cut and then they have standard super low sights that you automatically have to spend more money on to replace and then you can finally have a backup sighting system with your red dot on. So again, Smith & Wesson, good job. I also want you guys to know that there will be a video coming up where I install my Holosun 507CX2 on this. So I'll go through all the different adapter plates in that video. I will also show you how to install it. And I'll be testing it at the range, making sure nothing comes walking out as far as these screws go, that it holds zero. And I'll also obviously be sighting it in. So you'll see all that footage in that next video. Now let's get to that trigger. All right, so a couple of interesting things about this trigger. This is the same trigger as the 10 millimeter option that M&P line is now promoting. You've probably heard of the 10 millimeter, not so much the nine version because their marketing is really heavily on the 10 millimeter. You have a little dingus here, a little Glock style dingus. And here's your take up. There's your wall right there. A little tiny bit of a creep and your brake. I would say this brake is four to four and a half pounds at the most. Very nice light brake. You can shoot pretty fast with this if you want to. And there's one other thing I want to show you on this trigger, which is the reset. This is where it gets interesting. So on the reset, there's a little bit of a spring, meaning you don't go straight back to the wall. You go to the wall plus a little bit extra. Let me show you what I mean. So you're coming back. There's your pop out and then come back a little bit to the wall. Interesting. If you're thinking about, should I just leave this trigger in? Should I get an Apex or some other aftermarket trigger? There's your data point. I'm not personally going to hold that much against that little pop to where I'm going to want to replace it right away with something else. It's great for me, especially compared to the old style hinge trigger for the M&Ps and especially even more so compared to a factory Glock trigger. Now let's talk about the grip angle. That was the big stepping stone for me moving away from Glock and going to the M&P series. It's got a very natural, I believe 18 degree grip angle, uh, similar to a 1911. And this for me just points more natural. When I'm holding a Glock, I kind of have to do it like I'm punching and have to drive it down a little bit, which is good and bad in some ways. It's not as natural for me to just bring it up and shoot. But if you're thinking like, oh, well, if you're in a fight and you're throwing a punch, if you just think about it like you're throwing a punch, then it's intuitive in that way. Also, having it pushed down more might help you control recoil a little bit more. Maybe I could see those arguments, but for me, this is just way more natural. And I found after shooting an older version of this gun at the range and then going back to my Glock, I immediately had to figure out how to hold my Glock again. <laughs> the grip length for me, I have large size hands and you can see I still have a little bit of meat hanging off, but it's not as bad as if I was holding a Glock 19. So I get a full grip for the most part on this. I get a little bit longer sight radius, which only really matters if I'm using irons. I have a little bit more mass reciprocating, a little bit more weight. so. Recoil isn't as bad. And because I have this longer grip, I also get the benefit of two more rounds than a factory Glock 19 magazine. So we have 17 rounds. And what I found was interesting, all the odd numbers are on this side and then all the even numbers are on this side. I just noticed this like maybe yesterday. And the last thing as far as the X Factor stuff goes is that it just looks awesome. I mean, just look at it. Look at it. Final thoughts. I'm not going to say that I'm in love 
with this gun, but I am definitely infatuated. It checks all the boxes for me and at about half the price of my Glock 19 as far as what it costs to put all that together and have it the way that I wanted, this just comes like it from the factory. So thanks again, Smith & Wesson. I will say it took a while for them to make this. I had been bugging them about having a full-size version of the Optics Ready Compact for the longest time. I was like, you, you, ha you already have the whole design, just make it a full size. I don't want the core. I don't want all the lettering all over the slide. I also don't want the Spec Ops series because I don't need a dagger or a challenge coin or a Crimson Trace Optic or all this other stuff that comes with it. I don't need all that. I just want an optics cut, front cocking serrations, suppressor height sights, and it be a full size. That's all I want. And finally, after email after email, I convinced them for you guys to make this. At least that's how it feels from my perspective. They probably were just already going to do it anyway, and I'm just ignoring my emails. But either way, you're welcome. It just feels right. It just feels right, guys. I'm excited to bring you more content on this guy here. I will have a video again on the red dot installation stuff, testing it at the range for you. I'll also have a video after that on a holster option for this. I'm going to be putting a TLR 1HL on here and my red dot. I have a holster that works with that is deep concealment, has some interesting technology, some patented technology to make it even more concealable than most other holsters. And it's coming in at $43 and something cents. So insanely affordable, a lot of great features, kind of along the lines of this guy. And the only way, again, you'll know that that video is coming out is if you subscribe and click that notification bell. <laughs> well, that's going to do it for me and the Smith & Wesson M&P 9 2.0 Optics Ready Full Size. As always, thanks for watching. Stay free. 